The ellipse is defined as the set of all points such that the sum of the distances to two given points called foci or foci is a constant. The center of an ellipse is the midpoint of the line segment between the foci. So we start with some point a center and we also have these two points foci. They are on either side of the center. The ellipse would be made from finding a point and the sum of the distances to the foci is a constant. So if we take a straight line from the point to one focus and then a straight line from that point to the other focus, we find that that distance will be the same for any point on the ellipse. I could pick one back here and do a straight line to one focus and then a straight line to the other focus and the sum of those two lines will equal the sum of the two lines from this point and all the other points on the ellipse are found that way. Now, an ellipse is similar to a circle in that they are both closed shapes with no corners, no vertices, just a round kind of a shape, but a circle we would see that going from the center to the edge was the same distance all the way around. But an ellipse, it's not like that. Let's focus on what we see horizontally and what we see vertically. Horizontally and vertically. Let's take a line from the center and vertically go to an edge. And let's do it again from the center down to the edge. This is the minor axis because we see that it is shorter. It would be the major axis if we go horizontally and, and spot that that is the long side. The major axis does go through the two foci. The minor axis would be the smaller side. No foci on the smaller axis and some distances that we are interested in would be that on the minor axis we'll call this distance B from the center just to the edge on it's always going to be horizontal or vertical for the ellipses that we look at we won't look at ellipses that have been rotated in a certain way so we'll know that one side the short side will have a length B the long side will have a length A and we're talking about the length from the center all the way to a point on the ellipse the edge the distance from the center to the focus is actually the distance C. We won't take this idea too much further, but we can express the quantity C as C squared equals A squared minus B squared. So we won't take this quantity too much further in our examples. We will be paying more attention to these quantities A for the length on the major axis of the center to an edge of the ellipse and the quantity B on the minor axis from the center to a point on the edge of the ellipse. Now let's look at four standard forms of an equation for an ellipse. I'd first want to point out that we do see an x squared plus y squared which is pretty similar to what we saw for the equation of a circle but now we have the variables in fractions and in the denominator is where we're seeing those quantities A and B. So first of all let's talk about the difference between these two forms. A always represents the length on the major axis. So this top one tells us that our ellipse will have a major axis on the x-axis, or let's at least just say a major axis horizontally. Down here we're seeing that A representing that major axis length from center to edge of the ellipse is now under the y variable. This would be the case where our ellipse has more of this shape where the major axis is vertical and the minor axis is horizontal. Now hopefully we can recognize the meaning of these two forms of equations. They are for those instances where the center of the ellipse is not at the origin. It is at the point HK. So we're still identifying a center as HK. We'll know that we're talking about an ellipse, not a circle, because now we see some fractions that have different quantities. Let's take a second to point out one quick thing. What if the quantities A and B were the same? What if we saw x squared over 4 plus y squared over 4 equals 1? We'd want to first see the center is at the origin, that we don't have an h and k, no quantities being added or subtracted to our variables. So let's go ahead and do a crude sketch. The center is at the origin. Now A tells us our major axis. Here we're saying on the x-axis, remember, squared, so we have to think the distance is 2, not 4. The distance is a, our denominator is a squared. It's very similar to circle where 
On the right side, we saw an r squared, but our radius, we had to do square root. Very similar idea. So on the x-axis, two units from the center to the edge of the ellipse. And on the horizontal axis in the negative direction, two units to the edge of the ellipse. Now, y squared is also over 4. So a and b are both equal to 2. And that's actually going to give us a circle. If I can try my best to fill this in and make it look like a circle. So how does this connect to what we've already talked about with circles? Take this quantity, this actual entire expression, multiply every term by 4. And that will show the equation x squared plus y squared equals 4. But if we're talking about a usual equation for an ellipse where a and b do not match, let's say we had x squared over 4 plus y squared over 25 equals 1. First of all, there's not a way that we can multiply a number to make this become an x squared plus y squared equation. And if we think about how we would sketch the graph, again, it's another bad graph, but on the x-coordinate, distance from the center to an edge is 2 units, and on the y-axis, the distance from the center to the edge is 5 units. And now we're seeing how we get more of the elongated, the oval ellipse shape. So we'll be paying attention to the denominators being different. That's how we'll know we have an ellipse. If the denominators turn out to be the same, we can actually simplify it this way to look exactly like our form of an equation for a circle. Now let's hit the last conic section, the hyperbola, and I know we've gone through a lot of information, but after we talk about hyperbola, we'll talk about real quickly what main ideas you need to know to be successful at the problems that we're about to face.